Anticholinergic syndrome is a clinical syndrome caused by extremely low levels of acetylcholine signaling. This is usually caused by taking excess amounts of anticholinergic medications, which work to block acetylcholine signaling. In this mnemonic video, we'll cover all of the important anticholinergic side effects so that you'll be ready come test day. We're at the park where litter is a huge problem. Just take a look at the empty, broken cola bottle on the ground. Here at Pixarize, we use cola to symbolize acetylcholine. You can even call it acetyl cola if you want. And this bottle is empty, broken, and low on the ground, representing how we are talking about low acetylcholine activity, which is what causes anticholinergic syndrome. Like I mentioned before, low acetylcholine activity is usually caused by taking anticholinergic medications, which works to block acetylcholine signaling. So if you see empty, broken, or falling cola in our other pharmacology scenes, those medications are anticholinergics. Acetylcholine is the main neurotransmitter of our parasympathetic nervous system. In other words, it primarily acts in our body's rest and digest mode. So when the body has low acetylcholine, you can imagine how this might cause the opposite of rest and digest. Let's cover what these symptoms might be. This park we're in isn't maintained very well. First, the broken cola bottles littering the ground, and now this broken, dried up fountain depicting a cherub taking a leak. The fountain has been out of order for quite some time and is completely dry. This broken cherub fountain is here to symbolize urinary retention. Just like this cherub is not peeing because the fountain is broken, one anticholinergic side effect is urinary retention. Patients experiencing urinary retention produce urine, but they have difficulty emptying their bladder. They may describe it as feeling the need to pee, but not being able to. As the nurse, you should be closely monitoring the intake and output of people on anticholinergic medications. As he was walking through the park, this boy here was super thirsty. The food stand is out of cola, but he really needs something to wet his dry, cracked tongue. Which reminds me, this dry, cracked tongue is our symbol for dry mouth, another side effect of anticholinergic syndrome. This makes sense because increased saliva is part of rest and digest. And since we're talking about the opposite of rest and digest, people with anticholinergic syndrome have a dry mouth and decreased secretions, including decreased saliva production. Patients experiencing a dry mouth can counteract the side effect with sugar-free hard candy or gum, as well as by drinking plenty of water. Next, take a look at the boy's big wide pupils. He didn't find water, but he did find a food stand with delicious chocolate treats and his eyes are big wide and starry with anticipation for some chocolate. Let the boy's big wide pupils symbolize mydriasis, the medical term for dilated or wide pupils. Dilated pupils are another anticholinergic side effect and sometimes patients may complain that their vision is blurry. The girl working the food stand is trying to get the boy his chocolate dessert, but she's having a hard time squeezing the chocolate syrup out of the tube. She is really squeezing hard, but nothing seems to be coming out. This girl's struggle to squeeze the chocolate syrup out can help you remember one of the other important anticholinergic side effects, constipation. Constipation is the opposite of rest and digest, just like all the other symbols we've talked about so far. The girl is determined to squeeze out the chocolate and she's vigorously shaking the chocolate syrup up and down, giving her quite the workout. Take a look at her fitness watch showing a high heart rate from her exertion. Let this fitness watch symbolize a high heart rate, also known as tachycardia. With low acetylcholine, patients may experience tachycardia. The girl is so confused as to why the chocolate isn't coming out. Use her confusion to help you remember that low acetylcholine levels can alter a patient's mental status, causing confusion and potentially even delusions or hallucinations. This is particularly the case in elderly patients, so keep a close eye on their mental status if they are taking an anticholinergic medication. So far, we've covered what anticholinergic syndrome looks like. Now, let's close out by talking about how this condition is treated. The physician in the background is walking around the park on her lunch break. And being the public servant she is, she's picking up an empty cola bottle to prevent the broken glass from injuring someone else. By the way, a physician is our symbol for the drug physostigmine. And just like the physician is picking up the empty cola bottles, the drug physostigmine picks up or increases acetylcholine levels. This is why physostigmine is used as an antidote to treat anticholinergic syndrome. All right, that's all for this mnemonic. Let's recap. Anticholinergic syndrome is a clinical condition caused by excessively low levels of acetylcholine signaling, most often caused by anticholinergic medications. Clinically, anticholinergic syndrome manifests as urinary retention, dry mouth, pupil dilation, constipation, tachycardia, and altered mental status. The best antidote to treat anticholinergic syndrome is physostigmine. And now we're all done with anticholinergic syndrome. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching. 
For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.